Super Bowl time, people. Let's go through here, make sure everything is working. Looks like my audio is working. Let's see if my camera's good to go. There you go, man. Um, yeah, Super Bowl time. I know a lot of uh, viewers here um, that come to the channel actually are in the UK, so it might not be a big deal for them. But you know, I'm a big football fan, both in the um, both in the uh, the English sense and also the uh, the US sense. So this is kind of a, a fun day for me. Let's see what we got going on here. Um, boom, 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 boom. What are we doing here? I like that one. I think we are there. So, um, what are we going to do today? We're going to do a couple things here. We are going to drink some beers. Um, what's going on, Felix? We have both a win uh, window beer review by Thomas chiming in. Uh, we also have Felix from up in Canada way chiming in. Um, Thomas saying he knows nothing about American football. Nothing wrong with that. You know what I mean? What we're going to do is going to drink some beers leading up to it. Basically, our version of a pregame tailgate kind of thing up to the game. And then, um, and then uh, yeah, we're going to talk a little bit of sports. We're going to talk a little bit of beer. We're going to talk a little bit of betting. I usually don't talk betting with a lot of people on YouTube because it's just not something I do a ton of, but I always bet the Super Bowl and a couple little things here and there. So I figured we talk a little bit of what I think is going to happen and what I'm, I have a little bit of wager on here and there. So we'll see what's what. Just trying to get everything my little setup going here, correct? Proper. We have my buddy Ryan Lou Brew chiming in. What's going on, homie? Uh, uh, let's see if I could just do this a little bit better. Uh, yeah, we'll just do that. <sighs> Tails is the play. I don't know, man. That's not what I'm talking about right now. We'll get to that in a minute. So we're going to let people kind of filter in. Um, we're going to go from there. We're going to talk, um, we're going to talk beer. I'm going to do a couple of beer reviews. I'm going to do a live, uh, mystery beer, um, during this, uh, don't worry about missing any of them. Um, because I'm going to actually record these on the side and repost them outside of the stream. So we're going to do a live mystery beer. We're probably going to do a, a, one of the Dutch guys. Um, uh, one of the beers of Dutch dude sent over and it may be something else but right now we're just going to crack a little bevy get a little bit of a get a little uh get a little comfort zone going what else would we start off with dry hop cream out baby um yeah so we'll see what's what uh what do i want to drink this out of let's grab this little fatty right here and see what's what so um Taya, uh, we'll get to the betting part please like and share says thomas yeah that's cool or don't either way we'll figure it out um Oh, man. I'm tired. I am extra tired. I did so much work this weekend. Um, my wife, uh, most of you know, my wife is pregnant. And I have taken upon myself to start doing all of her chores um, that she normally does around the house. So she doesn't have to do them anymore um, because I'm a nice guy like that. What can I say? Um, so, <laughs> the, um, so, yeah. So um, I had fed the goats today and fed the chickens and did a whole bunch of stuff. So that was pretty awesome. Um, Tiger fan saying, don't be against Tom, bro. I'm not against Tom. The, see, that's, a, that's the biggest misconception. People think I'm against Tom Brady. I'm not. I just think Tom Brady is a very well-traveled, decent quarterback. I don't think he – he's the most winningest quarterback in the history of the NFL. That is without question. Um, that I am not saying, but I, I, don't, I don't think he's an elite quarterback. Um, some people agree, disagree with that. They view that as me being hateful. No, I mean, Robert, I always say Robert Ori. Robert Ori has seven rings. He was a starter on all those teams and led multiple stats throughout, not just the regular season, but in the playoffs. They're the same thing. They're an integral cog and a very well-oiled machine. Um, and that's what he is. You know what I mean? So I don't hate the dude by any stretch of the imagination. I just don't think he's He's, you know, he's in my top 50 quarterbacks of all time, I think. I don't think he breaks into the top 30, but he's definitely in the top 50. Let's put it that way. Um, Matt G saying cheers, buddy. Um, beer in since mit, I can't pronounce. I'm sorry, brother. I'm, I've been trying. Um, and uh, good luck with the soupy bowls. There you go. Um, good evening. When does the Thunderdome start? In about two and a half hours. So, uh, cheers. Hey, 
Hey, yo, what's going on, Clayton? I'm actually drinking the same beer right now, Cream Ale. Are you drinking the dry hopped version, though? Hmm. 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 Anyway, and uh, that dry hop cream ale looks uh, ale looking like an any IPA. Dude, it's fucking delicious. Have you had it yet, Ryan? It's absolutely fucking fantastic. You have no idea. Uh, and Joel P saying, you know, I'm a massive Bills fan, and I hate Tom Brady with passion. Give the man props. I am absolutely 100% giving him props. He is the most winningest quarterback of all time. That's nothing to blink an eye at. I genuinely, without like troll douchebaggery, think he's a really good quarterback. Maybe saying he's not in a top 20 or 30 is a little bit harsh, but he's not in my top 10, not even close. You know what I mean? And that's not me just trying to be a douche. It's legitimately what I believe. So it is what it is. Um, yeah. Anyway. Um, so like I said, uh, we're going to do a couple beer reviews. I have a bunch of bets lined up that you guys might be interested in. Like I said, I'll probably try to do that right around five o'clock hour. Um, just so, you know, guys, if you want to put them in, you can put them in. If you don't, you don't, um, it's up to you. I got some interesting one. I got a long shot parlay, a very high risk, but high reward. That's what they come in. And I honestly think it's a very, very good shot of hitting. And you're talking about probably somewhere in the range of, 20,000 to one or something like that. You know what I mean? So put 10 bucks in that fucker. You can be rich. Mm. Let's see. It's a high life night. It is it's that kind of, see, that's the thing about the Super Bowl. The Super Bowl is much like new, uh, you know, New Year's Eve or, or a beer share. You really got to kind of pace yourself. You got to understand it's this, it's, it's not, a, it's a marathon. It's not a sprint here. So, you know, I've got a little bit of cream ale here. I got a couple easy chuggers floating around over there. So just kind of slowly kind of eke into the evening a little bit and hopefully make it to the end of the game. <laughs> That's the most important part. Uh, I'm not drinking the dry hopped. Uh, <laughs> no work tomorrow, which means day brewing triple IPA time. There you go. Uh, he says, I have not. Did they say that what hop it was dry hopped with? I forget. They don't. I don't believe they talk about it on the can, but they do. Uh, if you actually go on the website, I believe. Yeah, they don't call it out in a can. I know the previous ones that I've had, because I've had dry hopped versions of this from the brewery um, as like part of their brew house series, not this kind of commercial um, off series. And uh, and those are, I think it was Mosaic was the one that I, I, I've had from them twice, I believe. So I'm assuming it might be Mosaic, but it's a 4.5% soft mouthfeel. Water nerdy kind of little hazy pail, and it's pretty damn delicious. To be perfectly honest, yeah. Um, Brew Captain saying wasn't selling at the store, so they were pushing them out one dollars, uh, one dollar a beer. I mean, oh, one dollar probably for the big gin and cream, like the big heat, the pounder can, or with the not even pounder can, the big one, the 20, 20 ounces or something like that. Probably that's that's a good deal, regular gin and creamers. Um, Hosting a sour beer tasting with five strange roots and a couple from Insurrection here in Pittsburgh. I dislike the NFL, love the premiership, real football. I love both, man. I love both of them equally. There are 1A, 1B. There you go. Okay, wait a minute. One's 1A, 1B. Which one's 1A? I don't know. They're both 1A. Let's put it that way. Um, and I changed, I, I challenged myself not to drink alcohol for the month of February. Good on you, man. I did last year. I did like a dry, semi dry January. My birthday's the 13th of January. So immediately after that, I did a whole month into the middle of February until Valentine's day, basically. And, uh, it was good. I, d I dug it. It was fun. Uh, I am not doing that this year. Uh, I have a baby coming in about a month, so I am drinking, uh, while I can <laughs> and doing that. Uh, yeah. Anyway, it's, uh, yeah, I am not doing that until probably. Yeah, a month from now. I mean, I'll still have beers when the baby is born, but definitely got to cut back and spend time with the kiddo and and just do all that kind of fun stuff. So it'll be interesting to see how that works out. Um, uh, okay, for my Dutch beer channel in English, beer and food with, and uh, I wish I gotta have to tune into your channel because I don't have to pronounce your name and I don't want to be like a jerk and make it sound like I'm. Yeah, you know, as far as uh, no, let's give it a whirl. Let's give it a whirl. How would I dissect this name? This is. The T H I S T I 
D. So I would assume the J's are silent. So I would go, as an American, I would go th Thisted. Thisted? Maybe. Somewhere along now. Anyway, um, according to I, Instagram, it's dry hop and citrus. That makes sense. You know what I mean? There you go. So, and here's the best part about it. these are drinking really, really well. And these are from like August. <laughs> that's the best part is that only are they stable uh, or delicious are actually stable. So that's pretty fun. So anyway, so like I said, dealing with a lot of NFL on this is going to be not for everybody. I even wearing an Arsenal shirt right now. So I got a little bit of a premier league um, representing, but um, let me know what you guys think about the game. I'm excited for it. I don't think it's going to be a close game. Um, I think it's going to be pretty much, um, I wouldn't say a runaway, but a relatively, handily executed victory by the chiefs um i if you look at it from and this is the crazy part is that the chiefs i think have more talent as a team i just think the talent of the players of the chiefs the best players are better in across the board almost exclusively for Kansas City. Like Mahomes is infinitely better than Brady. Tyreek Hill's way better than any of their wide receivers. The running back is definitely leaning heavily into the Buccaneers' favor, and we'll talk about that in a bit. Um, and, uh, you know, tight end, obviously, Kelsey's way better. Now, you could say almost a push on the offensive line, but the Kansas City has a lot of uh, offensive line issues coming in this, uh, injuries and stuff like that. But... It's also some homes, you know, they kind of make it work, and Andy Reid's really good at that stuff. And I think the defense, uh, you know, the the, the Bucks defense, I think, is a much better, or, or, or uh, not much, but they're definitely a better defense. But um, the big difference is, is that if you look at the Kansas City's defense, they bend, they just don't break. They're, they're, and they're always good for a home run uh, at least once in the game. You know, uh, I forget the name of the one cornerback. Um, it's a rookie guy, I believe. Uh, he's an interception every game in the playoffs so far. Um, you know, like, um, you know, Chris Jones is a monster. They're, they just, they, and Tyron Matthew is just like a ball hawk. So it's like, it, 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 it's, um, yeah, yeah. I just think, I think they're good to really, um, yeah. Yeah. See, well, here's the thing. Kyle says Bucks in a close one can't bet against Brady in a Super Bowl. Is that true? Is it true? Or can you not bet against Belichick in the Super Bowl? Which one is it? I think it's the Belichick factor more than um, more than Brady. Not that he didn't have bits and pieces to do with that, but I, I believe, you know, it, and if you look at, for example, Joel talking about you can't Kyle except when they're playing Eli Manning's Giants. If you really do look at it, there the times when the Patriots played the Giants, um, and lost. Tom Brady missed the throws. That's what kept them from winning. It wasn't Belichick scheming. They were in the game. It says Brady was the one who missed the throw. Um, that even goes as far as the Eagles lost too. Um, you know, and, and basically the same thing essentially goes for the Seahawks victory. They just, you know, the defensive actually came up, um, came up big, you know what I mean? So it's really, I mean, Brady's been kind of, you know, the one, the one, I mean, the two that he was just a juggernaut in was the first one, um, that they played in. That was more of a team effort. Um, but it was really the, the comeback, against the Falcons was, I mean, it was a combination of the Falcons playing like idiots, but um, Brady, that was the one he really showed and proved. And outside of that, um, the losses are kind of solely on him um, almost to a certain extent, because there were plays to be made that he just missed. You know? um, so you, you can bet against, you can bet against Tom Brady in the Super Bowl. You might lose. I'm not going to say that. I think the chiefs are, there's no way in the history of mankind that the Buccaneers could win. And, but I'm not going to say that, but let's put it this way. If the Buccaneers, if the Buccaneers are going to win, a few things are going to have to happen. One, they're going to have to run the ball like champions, like crazy insane. It's one of my best bets for this. One of my favorite 
per, uh, player prop bets is actually based off of that. If they don't run the ball really, really well, which they've had in, the, in throughout the playoffs, so it's possible, there's, they're not winning. You know what I mean? They're not. Um, let's put it this way. If the Bucks are up two touchdowns in the fourth quarter with 10 minutes left, or the Chiefs are up two touchdowns in the fourth quarter with 10 minutes left, who do you think has a better chance to win the game? If the Chiefs get up by two scores in the game, it kind of, it kind of, they're, they're, they're up against it bad. If the Chiefs are down two scores, they're like, yeah, whatever. We could do that. Give us 30 seconds. We'll change that shit in a minute. So that's kind of like the the, the big difference for me is that like the, if the Chiefs go up, they win. If the Chiefs go down, they probably win. If the Bucks go up, they have a chance to win. If the Bucks go down, they have a really small chance to win. It's kind of it's it's you look at the stats, you look at the way things have gone this year. I mean, even the Chiefs, if you look at the Chiefs. The only game they've really lost for about a year and a half was the Raiders game. That's it. You know what I mean? They lost at the end of this season because they didn't play anybody. You know what I mean? The Chargers had fun. That's fine. Um, but other than that, it was really kind of just that one, you know, that that Raiders game in the middle of the season that was an aberration. Um Outside of that, and 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 the Bucks at times this year looked really, really bad. I mean, they look very nice going into the playoffs. Granted. That means they're playing the NFC, the infinitely inferior conference. With, I mean, you know, Drew Brees can barely throw a ball. Aaron Rodgers is, is great, but he always has those stinkers like he, he did. And they almost had a chance to win that game. And, you know, they played the, the, the Redskins, who gave them kind of a little bit of trouble. <laughs> you know what I mean? In that game, it wasn't like it was a blowout um, as far as, like, the, the, the back and forth between the two teams. So, you know, there's a... There's just, you know, there's just more, more to it than just, you know, Tom Brady and whatever. And that's the thing. He has crazy weapons. That's what I don't think people realize is that the reason they're there, the reason they're there isn't because Tom Brady's great. The reason's there is because Jameis Winston didn't throw 30 picks. They basically had the same production at quarterback minus 18 interceptions. You know what I mean? That's the only difference. The stats are the same. Everything else is the same except for the turnovers from Jameis. So if Jameis were to come in this year and have, you know, 15 turnovers, they'd probably be very close, if not in the same place. Now, Brady carries this kind of gravitas and this big kind of, you know, winning attitude, so that could definitely help players in the long run. Um, but, yeah, anyway. Um, let's see. Ba, 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 ba. Um, we have a Beer in Spitz uh, actually asking uh, when you when will we be doing the beer review with Thomas Hopet and beer with Douglas? That has yet to be determined. It's, uh, it's going to have to be on a Saturday um, because you know by, by the time me or the Nerd Sense guys get off of work and do what we do, it's going to be like six seven in the afternoon here. So it's almost certainly going to be on a Saturday or a Sunday, maybe a Friday if we could swing that. And uh, I would assume it won't happen sooner rather than later. So maybe this weekend coming up, maybe the following one. We've been talking about it. We just haven't hashed that out yet. Um, Kyle says, we'll see. Uh, will we see any cringe beer commercials a la Dilly Dilly from Bud Light for years ago? You will not. Um, you will see a lot of very sad and solemn commercials this year you will see you know you might have a bit of humor because some companies will lean in that direction but i think some of the major corporations are really going to do this push of we need to come together as a country uh need to battle the pandemic very kind of you know very kind of um just you know that kind of commercial more more kind of showing that they're like compassionate to the to the strife of the american person and, and the people dealing with with disease that's oh, I, I if i could bet that shit i would because that's exactly what's going to happen um luber saying that the chase d line could make a tom uncomfortable to pass it's going to be a long game for tommy boy not just that we have to understand that chris jones is going to do that and he's also going to do it up the middle uh that's the way you deal with tom brady you get getting him along the edge you can get at your turnovers um from here and there, but it's really pressuring him up the middle that gets him because he he while he can move a la Dan Marino in the cool, in the pocket in a dirty pocket back and forth, he does have a hard time with pressure in his face. And Chris Jones is definitely going to provide that. Um, and that's the, and, and on the flip side of that, 
it's you, you can't really say the same thing about Mahomes because he has like a I think his it's, it's like completion percentage on the blitz is like 70 it's like higher than most people's regular completion percentage he's better almost better against the blitz than he is not so it, 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 you can't really say the same about him you know what I mean um so we'll see what what what's what um if Tom Brady was a beer what would he be If Tom Brady, he wouldn't be. He'd be a hard seltzer. He'd be a hard seltzer. He would. Gets the job done. Low in calories. Very health conscious. Everybody likes him. But they're. it's just kind of like you find one and you're like, that kind of tastes all right. And it's good. But in the grand scheme of things, it's not what you really want. I don't know. What kind of beer? I mean, if I had to pick a beer, I mean, Lubru has, he says Brute IPA, and I see, I like Brute IPAs, though. Um, hmm. I don't know. What kind of beer kisses their kids and with open mouths and tongue? I don't know. That's weird. Um, anyway, uh, Jack Rosenthal coming in. If Tom Brady was an Arsenal player, who would he be? Uh, uh, current or anybody, if it's anybody, it's Sammy Nasri. That's who he'd be. <sighs> Just an asshole, you know, I guess. Uh, current player, who would he be? Oh man, dang, fuck. If you asked me this question two weeks ago, it would have been Mesut Ozil. Um, let's see. Current player, if I had to pick a current player. Oh, perfect. Matteo Guendouzi. I know he's out on loan. But he's still an Arsenal player, technically. So he's pretentious. He cries and bitches, moans a lot. Um, you know, he just doesn't get the calls. So he's M Mateo Guendouzi. I know it's kind of cheating because he's on loan, but I'm going to do it. I'm going to fucking do it. Um, <laughs> um, uh, let's see. Uh, let's see. Session beers for the game? I mean, for the most part. But then once I get a couple in, there's nothing that can happen. Capitalizing on tragedy, commercials, eh, it is. It is it, they, they definitely are. But they're not capitalizing on a, a, a tragedy to the sense that they're going to try to market it in a way. They're just trying to seem like they're compassionate, which I guess is the same thing. Will there be ads trying to capitalize on Black Lives Matter protest movement? Without a doubt, no. No, they will not. Because, I mean, there will be pushes for unity and racial... Um, racial uh, awareness to a certain extent, but there will be no mention of black lives matter and protests. That is a big no, no in corporate America. They don't go near that shit. They might do a little, they'll do some kind of let's all get together kind of stuff, but to address those specifically, they wouldn't do that because I don't know if you saw the election, 49% of the United States fucking hates certain people. <laughs> <laughs> and so, and that's a lot of money. So you will not see that shit happen. And Bill Bach, this is Happy Sun Sunday. Hello, everyone. Hello, Bill. What are you drinking? That's what I want to know. Um, let's see. Uh, <laughs> effing hard seltzer. Um, it says, do you have a favorite beer from the Netherlands? Do I have a favorite beer from the Netherlands? I have. I have a couple. Um, I mean, I'm a really big fan of what the Mullen does in their beers. This, oh, I found an old case of Columbus to IJ. This, this is, I found this case probably, I would say around 2010 or 11, and it was five years old at the time, and that was really good. So I like their stuff. I know people said they've changed since Duvel has bought them, um, but there's some really good breweries out there. But I mean, the Mullen is probably the best, to be honest with you. Um, uh, the sheer disrespect for TB. It's not disrespect. I mean, if I said, I don't know. If I said people who don't like puppies are assholes. You wouldn't say that's disrespectful if people don't like puppies. People don't like puppies are assholes. It's a fact. You know what I mean? So why is it disrespectful to say that if it's a fact? I don't know. 
Um, well played. <laughs> Love from the UK. Let's see. Yeah, yeah, because it is fucking. He's Matteo Guendouzi. Um, where'd you get that shirt? I ordered it. Um, it's from um, it's from Rhode Island Gooners. Um, uh, I don't, I don't. Who who sent me this? I don't know. I forget the gentleman's name, but in our Philadelphia, um, the closest city I'm to, I'm between New York and Philadelphia, so I belong to both kind of Arsenal supporter groups. And someone posted in our Philadelphia supporter group that these people, uh, the Rhode Island Arsenal supporters, were uh, someone I think worked for um, Vista Print, and he was just making these and selling them. You know what I mean? And I was like, yeah, that's pretty cool. So I bought it off that guy. You know what I mean? So anyway. Um, it says, are you going to get your hands on the Flying Monkey's new Fruited Sour? Which one? Tell me which one, because I will try. Um, we get a decent amount of Flying Monkey's down this way. Um, they tend to be a little bit pricey because, you know, it's an import from Canada. But I, I'd be interested in trying it. So if you send me send me which one, put it in the chat here, and then I'll keep an eye out for it if I could see. We, we get a decent amount, but we get a limited amount. Like, I've probably seen maybe about five to eight different flying monkey beers over the past two years um you know most of it's ipa or chocolate manifesto but i'll definitely keep an eye out um i like la trap oh uh yes yes la trap is probably uh, you know what? i might they have to be on the list i mean la trap's barrel and they are in the netherlands uh la trap's barrel aging program is pretty much one of the best barrel aging programs on the earth i know that sounds like kind of crazy but it's not they're be Barrel aged stuff is fantastic. At work late, I got a nice box from Hudson Valley. I'll be diving into tonight. There you go. Uh, when I NFL team, do people root for in Northwest New Jersey? Northwest Jersey, uh, Giants, New Jersey, uh, yeah, Giants, Jets, Eagles are the big three. You know what I mean? Um, so you know those that's like we're technically you know the Giants and the Jets playing New Jersey, so they're even though they're New York teams are. They play in New Jersey. Um, so, yeah. I mean, I'm a Dolphins fan. Um, oddly enough, I see a decent amount of Dolphins fans. That's really weird. But not so much because my age bracket, Dan Marino, kind of makes sense. Uh, Ryan O'Puff says, Matt, do you like any metal music? If so, what style of bands? Um, I like I like cheesy metal, man, to like hardcore, to old school you know what i mean i'm not a big like i'm not a big like 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 a uh, grind core death metal um kind of stuff but i can get into you know it depends i'm probably gonna say a band and people are gonna laugh at me and say that's not metal listen i grew up you know i was 10 when metallica came out so for me that's kind of what i grew up on um but then you know i can get down with like old metal bands new metal i like like uh, i mean Cody and cambria if you want to call them metal i would assume they're metal but i mean as far as like hardcore metal like uh, i used to run a music venue or me and my friends used to be part of a music venue up in northeastern pennsylvania we used to host a ton of hardcore bands i wasn't big into hardcore until i actually we opened it up for our own kind of weird electronic music but we hosted a lot of hardcore shows so we would get everybody in there actually code and cambria when they first when their first tour came through there but also like bands like freaking you know hate breed to strength for a reason the wisdom and chains and a lot of big hardcore bands would come through and stuff like that so i can get down with stuff if it's got listen it doesn't it doesn't matter what the music is if if it's made well and there and it's interesting i can uh i can get down with that so i if if anything i probably if i'm gonna lean into a music style that isn't like weird electronic music it's very old school electronic music like skinny puppy fucking uh nine inch nails you know what i mean stuff like that like weird like baby land and fucking a lot of the stuff that came out on a black box tvt set and stuff came fdm and all that kind of weird shit that's what i was kind of into so uh that's what i grew up on until i got into weird electronic music anyway score prediction prediction for the game 40 uh bucks 42 um oh no sorry Chiefs 42 bucks 27. So there you go. Um, uh, it's called a, a Memories of the Future and it's brand spanking new. Comes in a pink can. I will look for it. Uh, it's becoming a real party in here. Beer lovers unite. There you go. Uh, do you like barrel aged beers? What kind of question is that? Well, if you were here, I'd smack you. Yes, I do. Um, Dolphins Steelers fans are everywhere in the US. Yes, they are. Um, the Guinness Late Hop House 13. Your thoughts? I couldn't see if you did a review. No, uh, I have not had that. Um, the last 
Guinness beer I reviewed was actually the fucking just regular export stout for um like exports Guinness Day or some bullshit or St. Patrick's Day or whatever. There's a goof outside just to talk about like beer. Last proper Guinness beer I think I reviewed was their Nitro series. I did their Nitro. They had Nitro like white and they had the Nitro IPA, which was really poopy. Um, so I haven't had anything in a long time, but I will keep an eye out. People throw out um, recommendations. I'll definitely give a whirl um behemoth rules um star war i can agree with that uh guinness lager hop house your thoughts uh i did not do that uh the satanist in my top five all-time albums crazy how much negro's music is influenced by him beating cancer mm. the new hate breed is really good i haven't listened to it but i do know hate breed. someone put out a hate breed beer I think it's out west somewhere. Um, so I'm going to have to find that. Um, do you ever drink Dunk Dutch lager? Uh, I had to have drank Dutch lager. I just couldn't name one. <laughs> Brady threw for 505 in the Eagles Super Bowl. LOL. Yeah, but it, that, 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 it wasn't a meaningful 505. It was a, a trying to come back because they were constantly behind 505. I don't know. I just, it is what it is. You know, they did, but you have to say Tom Brady missed throws in that game that would have won in the game. You know, yeah, Nitro is a big pile of shite. Yes, it is. So I think I should do a beer review. I'm going to do a mystery beer review. Mm. Let's do a live mystery beer review. Get through this one. Then we'll get on to a little bit of, look at that. Mystery beer, beer courtesy of the guys from Nerd Sense. They, um, so um, uh, Dutch, um, let's see, beer reviews with, um, with Douglas. Um, and uh, Thomas Open from Thomas Open Beer Reviews sent us a box of beer. Us guys uh, over here in the United States, they sent it to the guys from Nerd Sense um, because just easier just to mail one box, and they mailed them the box, and then the guys from Nerd Sense packed it up. Sean more specifically packed it up and resent it off to me. There was two extra slots in there. And he sent me two mystery beers. This is number two. I actually reviewed number one last night. So, anyway. Here we go. So I'm not going to reply to some comments for a little bit. I'm actually going to put my little. Let me see if this is working. Ah, you son of a bitch. I'm trying to record it on my regular camera. But it has a decent quality to it. There we go. It's going. And there we go. Okay. Um, so anyway, um, before we get into it. I'm going to go through a couple of comments because I don't want to leave a couple people hate playing. And I've said, I have the hate, I have the hate breed beer. It was all right. Not bad, but a solid offering for lager. I was curious to try it. Uh, I'll send you a hop house. You're more than welcome to do so. I want to send you uh, from a Dutch brewery, some barrel aged beers as mystery beers. If you want, of course, no, I don't want mystery beers. Come on now. Um, Aaron Rodgers is overrated thoughts. Uh, I think that's wrong. I think he's absolutely fantastic. As far as a purely talent um, goes, he's basically a, He's kind of just like Mahomes is at that level of talent, just a little bit different. I think he's uh, one of the best quarterbacks that's ever lived, better than Tom Brady. Uh, I don't know, man, long time Pat fan. I got to say, fuck Brady for quitting on his team when he clearly still had games left in him. No sacred cows until retirement. Go Chiefs. Um, mystery beer out of Netherlands. There you go. I love, I love all mystery beers equally. But this one, we're going to focus on. So this, like I said, comes from the guys from Nerd Sense. Let me grab my little Billy Beecher here. Classic. Styling, so you get the nice little nerd sense sticker, blue painter's tape. Let's see how this sucker goes. Make sure my camera's recording. Yes, it is. Okay, so so much for drinking light. Well, this could still be a light beer. Um, you know, it's a dark beer in all sense, but that could be, you know, something a bit lighter. It does have a nice kind of soft head on it. I just from a knee jerk reaction from a distance, I don't think it's a big beer. I think it's probably more in the six to eight percent range just by looking at it. You probably can't see it on camera. Maybe you can kind of glean a little bit of light through there. Um, it's not the biggest beer in the history of mankind. Just by looking at it, it looks more like porter or even like English mild, um, something along those lines. So, yeah. Let's see. Let's see if you get a nose. That is. Hmm. That is an English man. I'm going to take my headphones off for this because no one's in a live chat. I don't know why I have that on. It's got like a soft little bready thing, 
Oh, man. I want to go more Bach on this for some reason. Bach, maybe even like, maybe even Dunkel vibes on this. Yeah, I'm getting like a German, German bready lager vibes on this one. So, yeah, I mean, I think this is going to be actually a low ABV beer now, and it's going to be a little bit of a crusher. So I think I'm going to like this quite a bit. I'm just going to dive in. Cheers. Ooh, that's cold. That is cold. Way too cold. This little, I, I have my little, like, uh, cooler pack here. Every, there's, like, a, it's lined with, like, uh, ice. So this is probably a little bit. And Star Warrior says, looks dunkle. It's a fucking dunkle. Not only is it a dunkle, I'm going to tell you right now. It's fucking Von Trapp, dunkle. Why? Because it's delicious. Because it's a 12 ounce can. And because it came from Sean from NerdSense, who has access to such things. So it's a dunkle. Wait, five, six, five point six percent dunkle. Von Trapp, Von Trapp, dunkle. I don't know what else you want me to say. So now here's the thing. Oh, I'm wrong. It's burial. See, I did this on the other review they sent me, too. I got all kind of cool about it. It's dark lager, so we're good. We're fine. I got all cool about trying to guess the exact beer. That giving it enough. Um, yeah, it's their Hellstar Dark Lager. Um, it is 5%, so 0.6% off. Cast in the clutches of eternal damnation and crucified by all the noise. It's dark lager. <clears throat> yeah. It's not like a Czech dark lager. Only reason I say that is because it lacks the bittering. But it is very cold, so that bedroom might show up. Um, yeah, I'm cool with that. 30 IBU. Sir, oh, wait. It says serve at 40 degrees. That's This is exactly the temperature they want it served at. So, Yeah, and actually, like Star Warrior, I'm saying it looks so thick. That head, that head, the way it, how creamy that head comes off. You know what I mean? And it, it, it's just, it's fluffy. That's why I almost got like Bach vibes off it from initial, initially how that head kind of came off. So yeah, it, it, it's, it's really tasty, really well made, really clean, really crisp. It's not giving you any kind of poopiness from the lager end of things, but I like this kind of pissed me off though. It's the second time I've kind of just jumped the gun on these and guessed them. I won't tell you which one it was, but the one I reviewed from them the other night, I kind of jumped up like it's this fucking beer, even though I knew it wasn't because I could taste there was something in it, but I kind of deduced myself out of it. And I kind of did the same thing on here. And that's the worst part, or it's the most, um, the pitfally part of uh, doing mystery beers is that if you gravitate towards a specific mindset on a specific beer, um, it's really, really, really hard to talk yourself out of it. Like really hard. That's kind of what happened here. You know what I mean? I'm just basically got so hyper, um, hyper focused on it being that particular brewery it, it, it's so much better if you kind of just keep that out of your brain and go really go hard into the beer of describing the beer and then wait to the last second and be like i think it's this beer rather than saying i think it's this beer and then kind of pigeonholing yourself into that kind of idea of that's what the beer is but you know what i said it was a you know i said it was a you know dunkel i said it was a you know dark lager dunkel we're in the same universe here uh and i said it was 5.6 it's five i'm okay with everything i said so I can always talk myself into being right on these, so that's nothing new. Um, um, to quote every Irish, Irishman, creamy pints are the best pints. Um, that sounds slightly pornographic, but I agree. And uh, this is making me want to go get beer, get some beer. I'll, um, I'm all out here at the house. Uh, how the fuck are you all out of beer on Super Bowl Sunday, dude? What's your... Why? Why, why are you doing that shit to yourself, man? It's almost like self-torture. Ugh. Let's see. Did I miss any comments? I, I, I didn't miss that one. Aaron, Aaron Rodgers over it. He's not. You're just, you're a hater. You'd say the same thing about me and Brady, but anyway. Um, and say, ba 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 ba. Not be that. We're caught up on comments. How do we like that? I'm a fan. So, yeah. Um, let's see. What time are we at now? I wanted to wait till about five o'clock. So, we got about 20 minutes. He says he's all out because he worked all day yesterday. You should be, you should have beer because you worked all day yesterday. <laughs> That's why you're not making any sense. 
Um, anyway. Uh, should open container law laws be repealed? Why can't I walk around in New York City with a can of beer? <sighs> I mean, yeah. Um, I don't know the law. So, there's a lot of laws that exist that don't actually exist. And I don't know the laws of New York. But... But, and I'll say this, there's a lot of people that say things that are laws and are not. So, for example, I can talk about PA law just because I know it better. Um, fun fact, every single place that serves alcohol, you can bring beer into from outside. Every single every single bar, restaurant, and, and, and bottle shop that ser can serve you a beverage comes automatically with a BYOB license, which means you can bring your own beverage. So, if you bring it, they'll tell you you can't do that. It's illegal. It's because they want you to buy shit there. Which makes sense. You're sitting there at their table doing all those kind of things, but every single one of them comes with a BYOB license, but most people think that's illegal. Number two, it's legal to walk around with an open container in Pennsylvania. That's not against the law. It's against municipality law. So if a specific township has an ordinance against it, that is it. correct, but it's not a statewide law. And that's why, um, that's why I don't, I don't know. Um, if that's the case in New York, is it? I mean, a city might have an ordinance, but at the same time, I know you can drink on a train. So what does that mean? You know, I can drink on a train in New Jersey. And it's kind of outside, you know, sure you're in a train, but it's not like you're in a, in a private area. I'm like, it's not, it's like totally legal. Like do you even have bottle shops in like the terminals in New York city and shit for you to grab beers for your train ride home. So I don't know. I mean, honestly, you know, if you grew up in my, my time in New York city, you know, when I was going to New York city, when I was 18, where times square was just all porno, porno shops and peak booths and really just drug central, you can understand. They just, you know, wanted to kind of keep it from getting too shitty. Um, but I think people should be able to do what they want to a certain extent. You know, I just think the, you know, if you're act a fool or you do dumb shit, the penalties have to be hefty in order to kind of curb that, you know, so it is what it is, you know, Jack chiming and saying train beers are the best, uh, Giza here from East London train beer. Uh, listen, train beers are the best. I, when I go to New York, I drive, I don't have a train like right next to where I live, but I have a train about 10 to 15 minutes away from where I live. And I always, I could drive to New York and it's probably actually it's more expensive. So that's why I take the train and it's just easier. And I always chug a couple beers and I've done reviews on the train. It's my ultimate goal for everybody that uh, watches my channel. I will do a beer review in every vehicle and every moving vehicle before this is up. I will, I want to want while in a car because there's some States where you can have an open container in a car and a passenger could drink. I will be doing a beer review that i want to do one in a plane i want to do one in a helicopter i want to do one it doesn't matter any conveyance a camel and when i'm if i ever get on the back of a camel i'm going to do a beer review so anyway um let's see uh, uh let me go back up i missed a few um that was the old container law. Um, uh, let's see. Uh, cheers, Matt. I'm drinking a Casper Brewers. Mm, their anniversary of barley wine clocking in at 10.7% alcohol by volume 10, 2017. I mean, you're talking about a well, probably a three-year-old barley wine because even though it's technically four years old, most barley wines from my... No. No. Yeah, because it could be early 2017. So, you know, four-year-olds on a barlow line, I think is right when they start to hit their stride. So it's probably pretty freaking awesome. I will go do that and be back to crack one open with you. There you go, man. That's what I'm saying. It's Super Bowl Sunday. You worked hard yesterday. You earned a motherfucking beer. Um, uh, I'm not going to pronounce your name, brother. But I'm going to say, do you think Casey or Tampa is going to win? I think uh, Kansas City is going to win 42 to Tampa's 27. Yes. And um, I know some nice beers from Netherlands. I, I want to send you. That would be pretty awesome, dude. Uh, like, again, uh, Netherlands beer, I've had a, my fair share. I've never been in the Netherlands. Um, but I've had, for, um, you know, we get decent amount of import over here from Netherlands. I've had several friends venture to the Netherlands and bring beer back. Um, so I've had some pretty good ones. But I'm, prob I'm sure there's probably tons I've never even come close to even trying. On vacation in Savannah is an open container city. It was damn wild walking around with cocktails. Every bar made cocktails to go. Uh, can't like 
can't like wad a damn good time. Yeah. I mean, yeah. Yeah. I mean, it, it, that is a great thing. Walking around from place to place and drinking beer. That is, uh, where did I do that? I'm trying to think of where I did it. I mean, New York, I've done it. You're not allowed to do it, but I've done it in New York. <laughs> um, oh, Portland. Holy shit. I don't even know. I don't know the laws of Portland, but I was running around Portland in a snowstorm. But it's just bad. All kinds of good fun. Ask my buddy George. We went. Oh my god, we went everywhere in Portland. We would just we go to a bar and we get a pint and we just leave, walk out and be like, "See you later," and just keep drinking a pint. And like no one stopped us. We're like, "Fuck it, we'll just keep doing it." Mm. Anyway, not a hater on Rogers, man. I agree that he's up there in talent. Okay, the way you phrased it was, I, and I understand where you're going here. Aaron Rodgers is overrated. Thoughts? Your question is, is Aaron Rodgers overrated? If you write Aaron Rodgers is overrated, that's you saying Aaron Rodgers is overrated. That's how I read it. Um, so that's just me reading it in a specific way. Jackson over ten loans for everybody under thirty five. Um, they don't know how to drink properly. <sighs> Good in theory, bad in execution, because I know some 25-year-old people that are infinitely more fucking adult than a lot of 45-year-olds I know and vice versa. You know what I mean? So while the the more often than not, that tends to be the case, um, that shit would never pass. They really don't like to set ageism laws anymore. But uh, here, I got the... I got, I've got the the, uh, the, uh, the answer. Take an IQ test. If your IQ is over a certain percentage point, then you can do whatever you want. How about that? You know what I mean? Everything should be based on intelligence. Everything. Be like, okay, you're over this certain amount of intelligence and you can do these things. Other people are not allowed. I know that kind of sounds like horrible, but we have too many dumb people in the world. That's why the world's going downhill. You know, the, the idiotic people with a fucking sub 70 IQ pop out 39 babies and the person with 130 IQ waits until the right time, which never comes. So then you have a world filled of dumb people and the movie Idiocracy is a documentary. Um, uh, doesn't PA have this weird thing where you can buy 12 packs directly from a bar? Yeah, I, I you could do that in uh, yeah yeah you can actually yeah but also also you think that's weird you think that's weird let's get into PA weirdness for a hot second you can only take I think it's 192 ounces so you can only take 192 ounces from a place to your car maximum unless it's a beer distributor so what would that add up to oh i forgot to hit stop recording my little phone here i gotta do that so it's run out of juice uh, you don't know how hard this is anyway um so yeah what is 12 times 192 or, or, or 192 divided by 12 we have a calculator on here dun, dun. <laughs> One ninety-two divided by twelve. Yes. So you could only take um, one hundred and ninety-two. I think it was a one eighty-six. Anyway, one hundred and ninety-two ounces. I think is the number at a time. So, like for example, if I go into a bottle shop, not even a bar, a bottle shop, or if I go into a bar, let's say, let's use the bottle shop example for for conversation's sake, and I want to buy like a bunch of beer. Like a, a couple 750s, a couple 500 milliliters, a bunch of four packs, and, and a couple 12 packs. I can do that. But I physically can't carry those to my car in one set. I have to be like, okay, give me as much as I can add up to that's less than 192 ounces. I have to bring those to my car. Then I have to go back and get more. So, like, if I, if I had whatever 192 times three is, I'd have to make three trips in order to get all that beer into my fucking car. Unless it was at a beer distributor that has a distributor license. It's fucking PA for you. Um, <laughs> train beer is the best. Uh, I can chug a chug a beer. Never trained a beer. Uh, <laughs> what's your Super Bowl beer lineup looking like today? I have a couple things in the fridge. This is my kind of how I'm like hangs lineup here. 
I'm probably going to do, there's a couple in here I want to review. I'll probably do that after I go over a little bit of betting stuff. Got a little Bissell substance here. Um, they sent me beer. Bissell sent me a uh, eight pack of beer the other day, which is really cool. I have some of the Netherlands stuff. Um, I got, you know, obviously, you know, we're working with that Jenny Cream Ale, the dry hop version. I have some Carton Whip, which is like their little itty bitty Pilsner. Um, I got this. Uh, this is from Kyle. He sent this off. I'm probably going to review this. I'm going to probably do two more beer reviews, and this is going to be one of them. It's going to be the other half, uh, uh, staring at the sea, vanilla Baltic Porter with vanilla. Um, so I'll probably review that towards the end of the stream. And what I have in my fridge, I got some um, random stuff here and there, mostly light stuff, nothing too overly heavy, overly, uh, overly dense stuff. So anyway. Mm -mm -mm -mm. Mm. So yeah, what are your guys' predictions on the game? Let me ask today. A lot of people are actually asking me, like, what do I think the score is going to be? Who do you think is going to win? And what do you think your what do you think the score is going to be? Honestly, I'm really curious to see what people think. I know, I mean, Kansas City's favored by three. Um, I think that has a lot to do with. Tampa being home too, like people think it's just a, it's just a, you know, oh, okay, they're just doing the classic three points um, that you would give the person you think is going to win. You know, rarely they do like a pick them. It'll be three points, but um, you know, with Tampa Bay being home, even though they're there's going to be Tampa fans there because they're going to allow. I think they're going to allow up to like five to seven thousand uh, first responders or healthcare workers to the game. And which is cool, but it's also that means that almost exclusively those people are going to be people from in and around the Tampa area, which means it's going to be a definite home field advantage um, for Tampa Bay. I, I, but that makes me think that Kansas City has even a better chance to win because if you if you factor in the line in Vegas, listen, Vegas, Vegas set the line because they know how they want to make money. So if you want to strip all like bias from it just go look at what fucking vegas is saying so if you're saying kansas city by three and they're technically on the road and the other team is at home that means they're spotting kansas city fucking six points so line is actually minus six for kansas city because you're gonna get auto three at home so if it was like a neutral place you would assume it would be you know what i mean like it would be it, it would be it would be a pick em. If it was a neutral place, but it's not, it's at home minus three. So Kansas city is actually minus six. If you think about it. So that's a pretty big number, you know? So we'll see what's what, um, Ryan SJ actually says it's Tampa by four. I mean, if Tampa does win, if Tampa is going to win, uh, it's going to be close. They're not going to blow. They're not going to blow out Kansas City. It's not going to fucking happen. Kansas City can blow out Tampa. Tampa can't blow out Kansas City. Um, and they're going to have to run the ball. And it's going to be a squeaker. And that'll all be reflected into my uh, my best bets that will be coming up in about six minutes. Um, it says, need to drink all American beer for the American game. Hams all day. Take the points in the under. Um, I was very much all in on the under. I was very much all in on the under until I started to think about it. I don't think there's any way on this earth that Kansas City scores less than 35 points. I don't think that's possible. I don't think I don't think it's possible to score less than 35 points. Which means that the Bucks have to score 35 points to win. That's how my logic works. That's usually how I think about things. And I don't think they're going to score 35 points. We're going to do their best. So I'm thinking, you know, I think you get 21 points from their offense. I think you get 21 points from Tampa's offense. And you get, you know, from touchdowns. I should say I, you get a field goal here and there. Um, and then a, a weird play safety or a punt return, something lost. So I think they're floating in and around the high twenties. It has to go over then. 
it has to go over. Yeah, it has to. And because of 56 and a half, because that's what, and I, I mean, when I started the stream, the, the over under was 56 and a half. <sighs> my, my best bet, and we'll do that. Let's just jump it into my best bets here. How about that? Let me see if I can actually set this up. Share. Let's see. Share screen. Application window. Here you go. This is you're gonna see some fucking high tech shit right here, by the way. Look at that. So I got a notepad out so you guys can uh so you guys can see what's going on. Can I drag this over here? Well, it's still working. Well, good. Okay. So I, I, I always bet the coin toss. And heads. Heads is the play this year. Spread won't matter. Uh, I mean, not really. That's why I, uh, when we get to my other bet, I think I think that's what I'm going to do. So heads. Heads is the play. I, I bet the coin toss every year. Um, one, of my, one of my favorite betting... Um, my betting bets. There you go. That's that's a real word, right? Um, can I do this? Would it look better if I do this? Here, let's go over here. Let me do better. They won't let me do that, will it? Share screen. There you go. Let's do that. That way you can see my face. Because that's more important. So I got the I got the coin toss going on here. My one of my favorite bets of all time was actually uh, we, we ended up putting six thousand dollars on the coin toss once. Not me, but a bunch of us. We you know back when you're allowed to actually hang out and do all kinds of fun stuff with people. I used to go to my buddy's bar every year and we would um, you know we would bet like crazy shit on the Super Bowl. And then one year we're like okay well let's do our fucking bet on the coin toss because it's always a tone setter. I don't you know it sucks to lose but it's always a great thing because it's like you're immediately fucking jazzed for the game. You're like oh fucking bet in the game and. The coin toss. You're fucking either you win or lose, but you're it puts you in that kind of mindset to have a really good time. Uh, yeah, we ended up putting six grand. We end uh, at my buddy's bar. We ended up going, you know, fuck it. Let's see if anybody else in the whole bar, um, hypothetically, because it would be illegal to do sports gambling at that time, um, it wants to go in. And then we collected, and because it was a Super Bowl party in a bar, so we ended up going to everybody, and uh, ended up getting six grand. And we lost. <laughs> so we lost six grand on the head, uh, coin toss. So always got to bet the coin toss. We'll start that one off. Second, my favorite bet is actually Chiefs win parlay with the over. You know what I mean? That's my favorite bet. That's actually the one I think is the easiest one. It's a, a plus 285 is what you're going to get that at. Um, I got to stop this real quick and click on this and go like, who do you think you'd rather have a fucking beer with? Who do you think? It's got to be Gronk. I mean, didn't Brady once he drank a beer on TV once and it was like pulling teeth or some bullshit like that? Um, so my 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 favorite easy bet is Chiefs win and parlayed with the over because you're going to get decent odds in there. You know what I mean? You're going to get, you know, uh, plus 285 or 280. Yeah, 285 or 286 on that. Um, and I think it's, you know, the Chiefs are going to, they're going to get the 35 points. So that means that Tampa is really, they just got to score three touchdowns. You know what I mean? Like it's not, not even yeah, three touchdowns. So it's going to happen. So that's my, that's my probably if I, it, it's going to win. That's the one that's going to win. I don't care what happens. Now this, my second favorite one is Leonard Fournette over 30 rushing yards. You're going to get plus three ten on this. I think this is the, like, this is probably more of a lock than this. This is my lock on betting the game. As far as player props go, I don't think there's any way Leonard Fournette gets less than 70 yards because the only way that the Pats win or the Pats, Jesus Christ, the Bucks win is if they run the ball. They have to limit, they have to burn clock, and they have to limit the amount of time that the Kansas City Chiefs are on the field. They have to. Even if they get to the point where they're down towards the end, and they have to throw it, they're probably still going to mix in some runs. If they're close, they're just going to run. If they're ahead, all you're going to see is fucking Leonard Fournette. That's all you're going to see. So I think this is probably even a better lock than Chiefs win because there's, I think there's a, I, you know, I'm not going to be an asshole. There's a way that the Bucks can win. So my bet of Chiefs win plus over, parlayed with the over, I think is, 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 uh, is pretty close to luck. I don't see how this doesn't... The only way this doesn't happen is if Fournette gets hurt. 
or if he has like two fumbles early on and they say, fuck it, we're going Jones the whole time. He's in, he, he's had two weeks off. He's been a monster in the playoffs. He's one of the better running backs in the whole of the NFL that they got pretty much on a cheat because he was being a douchebag in Jacksonville. So I think, yeah, but that's the thing. See, and then you would think that would be counterintuitive because Ron says that's why I like to uh, under kill time. It takes the Chiefs 80 seconds to score. The Chiefs don't take long to score. It doesn't matter. That's the that's the kind of thing that y- 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 you try to run the ball. You try to drag out the game. You try to kill time. But what? What are you going to spend? You have an eight to ten minute drive where you score a touchdown and then 30 seconds later, Tyree kill for fucking 90 yards and, and a blink of an eye or Hardman or fucking anybody. And then it's over. It's like it's, it doesn't even matter because you're just like, we just wasted all the time and they scored in a fucking billionth of a second anyway. So I don't think I don't think that it's going to be that big of a deal. Um, let's see what else we got here. Okay. I love, love Tom Brady under, under 301.5. I mean, it's, you know, it's minus 115. So it's not like you're not getting crazy great odds on it, but still 115 if win a hundred. You know what I mean? I just think there, I don't, I don't think he gets, I don't think he gets over 260. If he gets over 300 yards. So, and this is where this kind of, um, and this is where it kind of comes into play. If you bet the Chiefs to win plus the over, okay, and you 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 have to bet this because what it, what you do is you kind of hedge it a little bit because if you if you win if you don't win the Bucks win plus over you win this. There's no way Brady throws for plus three hundred and they win. He can't throw the ball that much. He's not as accurate as he used to be. He's good for, and this is my next one. Is going to piss everybody off. He's good for turnovers, stuff like that. So yeah, it's almost like you want to bet both of those same time so you can hedge it. So this is the one where, in a perfect world, I couldn't find the odds on this, but it's going to be astronomical. I didn't bet this because I couldn't find the odds, and it's kind of my. This is my long shot parlay that is insane. But I think it's genuinely going to happen. So I have three things on the board here. I have, what will Tom Brady do first? Th- throw a TD, throw an interception. Throw an interception by itself is a really good play. You're talking about a plus 250 and him. He's going to throw an inter- interception before he throws a touchdown. I think that it's really good odds. He's turned the ball over this year. You know what I mean? Like, it's it is what it is. Simon actually saying, I haven't watched NFL all, all year. Does Brady have a deep receiver now? Yeah, he's got three of them. But he's been lucky on his deep balls. Like it, it, any of the deep balls he's completed, minus the one to Godwin. Was it last week? Yeah, no, it didn't last week, two weeks ago. Minus the one to Godwin, which he technically just barely overthrew it, and Godwin made a great play. He's uh, he's throwing up, he's throwing jump balls up to e- 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 Evans and Godwin. You know what I mean? Like he, he's not, he's not accurate at over 15 yards. He's just not accurate at all. So he can't throw the, the, the deep outs anymore. He can't throw anything, but uh, yeah. Um, Ronald saying bet the over the national anthem. I, uh, I was going to say no, because I think they wanted to keep it quick and concise and they don't want to go long, but I think it's a duet. And I think the duets typically do go a little bit longer. So that might be a good bet. Um, but this is my favorite one. So then it says, what will f- the first scoring play of the game be? And then you have down here, Chiefs defensive or special teams DD, TD plus 3,000. And then below that, first score method Chiefs plus 4,500. Parlay a Tom Brady interception for a touchdown as the first score. You put fucking 20 bucks on this and this hits. You're fucking retiring. You know what I mean? What's the odds going to be on this? I couldn't, I mean, obviously couldn't find it. I didn't call it in. I'm not betting it. I'm not that dumb. But um, but if you have the money, I'm telling you, Tom Brady's good for a pick six. He always has been. I have, and, and Lou Brewer actually has this, Brady, a plus 135 on over on INT. I, that's, I think that's the next thing I have on here. Um, so, yeah, that's, that's, that's a super lock. Um, yeah, that's a super lock one too, Ryan. So that's definitely on this. But if you parlay these three together and let's say you throw a hundred bucks on here, you're getting like, 
what is that going to be? You're probably going to look at at least six digit payout. That's the super fucking long shot parlay of the fucking of the game. I'm telling you right now. And if it hits and I didn't put, I'm not putting money on it. And if it hits, then I'm just going to fucking kill myself. Hmm. Anyway, next up, will Patrick Mahomes throw two TDs or more in any quarter plus 120? I think that's kind of a lock. Most Super Bowls, they start slow. Who knows? Maybe they, you know, down the field, field goal, maybe a rushing TD. And I think, you know, they always come in super hot um, ending the second quarter. I think you get two TDs from, especially if the Bucks, if the Bucks get the ball first. And they they really churn it out, and they don't do the whole interception thing, and they churn out, and they go on like a ten minute drive, and then you have like the Kansas City kind of puts a little drive together, and then the next quarter ends, they score a TD, and then they can get another one quick before the halftime. I think that's a really good bet. I like that one too. I have money on this one actually. Um, one of my favorite bets all the time. Color of the liquid poured on the winning coach, the Gatorade. I'm really feeling clear this year. I'm really feeling clear. I don't know why. I don't. It's almost always orange. That's why you're gonna get you the best odds on plus one ten. You're basically, you know what I mean. You're basically getting even odds on that one. Red and pink. Now, if anything, so you would think orange because that's classic. Red, you would think because both teams are red. So you think they might have a thing going with Gatorade to where they can have the red? So they'll do that, but I I don't think that's gonna happen. I think it's gonna they won't you won't see as much of the red, so they want you to have something of a different color. Now yellow, lime, green, that's the shit. That's a hard one because they, they could do that, and then Vegas could be like, well, it was kind of like a a brownish green, so I don't think any of them are gonna fucking you know be whatever. So no, but I, I don't know. Something has my. Something has me on clear. Something about clear. And by clear, I mean white. You know what I mean? Like a white. I assume clear is in that. White clear slash. I'd have, you'd have to verify that with uh, with your better. But clear, I'm talking about that white Gatorade stuff. I think that would be a good one. Um, let's see. Ryan says, surely Brady will pass short for completions in the first drive in order to get on the board. Um, yeah, but uh, eh. he throws it. that's what I'm saying. That's why I think. That's why I think this parlay I'm talking about here is that Brady throws an interception for special teams TD, and that's the Chiefs' first scores because you get um, Tyron Matthew or that rookie guy who's had to pick every – they jump a slant or a fucking screen or something like that and just zoom right to the fucking house. That's why I think that's a great long shot. Um, clear is not a color. No, well, you know. Hey, red is not a flavor, but people say red is a flavor. Um, Lubru, any O line to score or D line to score is plus eight hundred. Is it any O line or D line to score? I didn't see that. That's a really good bet. Does that cover like on offense, or is that offense and or defense? So if that's offense and or defense. I really like that one. So we're doing a little, uh, we're doing a little, uh, a little, uh, what should we call it? Well, audible. We're adding, we're adding Ryan's uh, little, little bet here. I'm going to add this one to the, uh, to the, to the, to the thing over there. I really, I really like that. That's a really good one. I did not see that one. So Ryan bringing the betting heat here. I'm going to appreciate it. Super Bowl MVP odds. So these are these are the ones here. Mahomes, kind of the given, you know. Tom Brady, sure they're not going to win, but anyway, I like Kelsey. I mean, I just like Kelsey. Uh, 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 the smart play here is Kelsey. Okay, I, I think because I could see, you know, you would think, okay, if Mahomes is off, there's no way he doesn't win, but. If Kelsey has a monster game, which he has want to do because he's had pretty much one of the best offensive uh, games or offensive seasons, uh, tight end or otherwise. Yeah. 
Yeah, I like that one. Don't like Hill. I could see Fournette hitting it. Tyron Matthew. I could see that. Grab Gronk. Gronk. Gronk is not winning the MVP. I can get I will bet you. I will take that bet. If you want these odds, I will take I will I will hold that bet for you. Um because there's no way. There's no way. He didn't even play all fucking year and he barely plays. He, if he scores let's put it this way. Based off of what Gronk has done in the past, okay, but in this season, if he had the craziest game he's ever had, or not craziest game ever, if he had an awesome game compared to what he typically has done this year, that would be what? Two touchdowns, 80 yards? That does not get you an MVP in this game. In order for him to get an MVP in this game and them not give it to Tom Brady, because listen, there's only two people that are going to win the MVP on the Bucks, And it's either Tom Brady or it's fucking JPP at 60 to 1. The only reason I say that is that, and this is my thinking about it, if I don't think Tom Brady's going to have 450 yards and five touchdowns. I don't think that's going to happen. So in order for the Bucks to win, Fournette has to have a, a great game, or the running has to have a great game in combination with Brady playing great, but their defense has to play out of its fucking mind, like out of their fucking mind. So I like JPP at 60 to one. That's because, and and you're like, dude, you know what I mean? Like, what are you talking about? It'd be like, you don't even think they're going to win, but that's what I mean. If the bucks win, they have to, they have to have a crazy defensive game. And if they're going to have a crazy defensive game, it's going to become from the D line, getting them homes. And I think that's your, that's your, that's a long shot. I mean, your best bet obviously is Mahomes. He's, he's negative money. Um, but I think your best bet is Kelsey, but it's a Super Bowl. There's always some weird player that fucking crushes shit and ends up, you know, winning it. So who knows what? Um, Simon saying, great to see you all. I'm back. I'm uh, going back to figure out what to do with my pool park. We'll see you, Simon. Cheers, homie. Um, Luber. Over 1.5 coach challenges. That, really? That's another one I did not see. See, now Ryan's bringing the heat here. People saying Gronk's going to win the fucking... MVPs. That's just crazy talk. That's a real bet right there. Plus 220? There's definitely going to be more than two coaches challenges. Is it just two coaches? Is it one and a half coaches challenges or coach it one coaches challenges? We need to know, Ryan. We need to know. It's very important stuff. But that's my bets. It's all my bets. Oh, wait. We have one left. Who will the MVP refer to first in this speech? Even money is teammates. Go with teammates. The only one that even comes close is God and religion. It depends on the player that wins. You know what I mean? It, 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 you know, you know. There's always like first and foremost, I'd like to thank God. But you know, when la- I think the last two Super Bowls, you had Mahomes, you had Brady won. I think both of those have a very, very, very high chance to win the MVP, and both of them think they're teammates and in the past two Super Bowls. So I, 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 I'm accidentally deleted one. I had one down here and says, who's who the MVP referred to in his first speech. And I had Bill Pelichick down here for Tom Brady at a plus 9,000. Um, yeah, I wouldn't bet that one though. Um, yeah, I mean, Ryan's right. 1.2 on the, on the coaches challenge for plus 220 is really good. I might have to do that actually. See, I love it, Ryan. You know what the fuck you're talking about, brother. So, yeah, there we go. That's what I'm talking about. Let's do a beer review. Mm. Turn my little camera around here again. God damn it. There it goes. So, what do we want to do? Hmm. I'll give you guys a choice. No, I'm not going to. We're going to do this one. 
This comes from Netherlands. This comes from, oh, maybe I will give you a choice. Hold on. I'll give you a choice. I got two, I got two Netherlands beers here. Okay. They're both IPA. They have a little bit of time on them. Keep that. And uh, uh, we have this one here, which is a 7% hazy. It's a 415 from Broxley Brewery. Seriously playful. It's an IPA, double IPA with London 3 yeast. And the hops are Galaxy Enigma Belma hops. So you have this one. And then we have this one. Let's actually... Uh, let's go back to the full screen. There we go. We have this one. It's another Dutch brewery. These come... Both of these come from my boy Thomas. And this is uh, Floom Craft Beer uh, from Up and Down. Um, and this is an 8% New England style double IPA with Mosaic, Nelson, Savine, and Nazaka. And the yeast is Vermont yeast. Okay. Which one should I do? Up to you guys. Dun, dun, dun. Somebody say something. So I can actually start drinking this goddamn thing. This one has a picture of denim and um, a Campbell soup can. And this one looks like, uh, I don't know. So you'd find it in a video game like Grand Theft Auto. So put those up there. So you guys decide. Um... Floom, 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 floom. Okay, Jack, Jack wins because he actually said it first. But I did, uh, I don't, how would you, I don't know how I'd pronounce it. Uh, floom, flam, flame, flame, floom, floom. Anyway, um, yeah, anyway. So there you go. We're going to do this. This comes courtesy of my boy. Um, let's start this for real. That's all I know. How you doing, you dude? <laughs> yeah, this is a little bit of floom craft beer. Uh, like I said, this comes courtesy of my boy Thomas from Thomas Open Beer Review. Um, this is double IPA. And what do they say on here? It says, uh, uh, speak their good. I don't know if I'm pronouncing any of this right. Um, oh, wait. And Jack just said it's called phlegm. Oh, that's kind of weird. Um, anyway, uh, <laughs> and uh, he says, uh, a name that would be imply something hard as nails as an artwork uses hard denim fabric to create a soft lines. So do we use a lot of oats to create something soft? A juicy IPA with loads of orange, ripe tropical fruits, gooseberry, and grape. Don't let it can art for you. This might look tough, but it's soothing to the max. And that's when I did the unboxing was one of my favorite things is, is don't like the, let the art fool you. Um, that this beer is soft and not hard as nails. Can somebody explain to me why Campbell's soup and denim makes something hard as nails? Because I would never have thought that a painting of denim and soup would imply hardness. Anyway, um, so uh, we're going to do this proper if it's from Deutschland. It's a 440 mil can. Um, and it has a best by date. Hmm. See, it says canning date. I can't see it. It says 412. It doesn't make any sense, but it says Best Buy of August 20 of 21. So I don't know what the dating on this actually means. Like, I don't know what the can on date because 412. Oh, December 4th. That's what it's from. There you go. Okay. So it's it was canned on December 4th. I always forget about those weird Euro. Euro uh, dating weirdness you guys do over there. So uh, December 4th, so it's only two months old. That's not all that old. And we'll see what's what. I do like the picture, though. So the label's kind of fun. So here we go. Pour it out, put that up there. Um, and comments-wise, uh, everybody telling me slim is actually how you pronounce it. Chicken soup from Campbell's cures the common cold. I uh, actually really enjoy uh, Campbell's chicken soup. Man. I know it's not the best. It's probably not good for you, but I drink like a can, at least a can a week. I love that shit so much. This is kind of semi-clear IPA, which is kind of cool. Uh, uh, so, yeah. Artwork by Rob Molan. Mo 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 Blue Composition, Canto 44. So, yeah. Label-wise, it's all right. Beer-wise, 
as you can see, it's it's relatively clear. It's like um, it's not like a super butternut squash soup kind of new schooly kind of super turbidiness. It's it's a, it's a bit clearer. Um, looks like old school, new school IP, headyish in its kind of vibe. I mean, I mean, I mean. It's got this cool pineapple peachy thing going on for me, to be honest with you. It's not overly aggressive. I mean, you're talking about an 8% double IPA. Um, you'd expect probably a little bit more hoopspa to it. It comes off a little bit lighter. But it, it, it's what is there it smells really nice. And it's like, like I said, it's like it's almost like a, like a, a pineapple peach ring kind of vibe to it. So it's got a little sweetness and uh, it's not overly kind of sweet. It's more of like a powdery confectionery kind of sweetness. And that's pretty much it. I'm not getting much as far as bittering, but that soft little fruitiness, done and done. Dive in. Cheers. I like that. It definitely has this kind of jelly candy kind of sweetness to it. So it's not, it's not like super sugary sweet, like white, uh, white sugar um, sweetness, but it's not like a powdery soft kind of confectionery kind of sweetness. It has this kind of soft, like I said, like a jelly, like a, like a peach ring. Think about that, like a peach ring kind of sweetness to it. It's less sweet than that, but that kind of vibe to it, the way the sweetness comes off. And it definitely hits you with soft pineapple, non-acidic kind of pineapple, kind of citrus. A little bit of peachiness, nothing too crazy, underripeness across the board, and a little bit of soft, like tropical fruit, like star fruit, like a kiwi kind of vibes. It's nice, it's tasty. I mean, the mouth feels drinkable. I mean, you can even see from the way the beer kind of comes off as far as how it looks. It's not like a super like dense beer, so it has this kind of drinkability to it. It really does remind me, maybe not on the the danky bittering side of things, because there is a bittering here, but It's a bittering here, but it's relatively generic. It reminds me a lot of those old school, new school beers. So old school, kind of like heady, fiddlehead, second fiddle, those kind of things going on. You know, your Lawson's old school, the New England style IPA before it became like a crazy new school, New England style IPA. It has those kind of vibes minus that danky green thing going on. It lacks that, but it's definitely a fun beer, a tasty beer. Yeah, I'm not pissed at it. The whole thing's going to be drank. There you go. Done and done. So let's talk about it. It's one of the better double IPAs I've had as of late. No. Um, it's worthy of being in a conversation, though. Um, you know, it's tasty and fun. Really well made. There's nothing as far as negative goes. But I really do enjoy my beers. The skew a little bit more in line. With a softer mouthfeel, a little bit more explosiveness, and I even want that bittering. I want a nice green, grassy, uh, even minty, something. Give me something, scallion, onion, something along those lines. I do dig on the kind of drop out all bitterness uh, New England style IPA, uh, as it were. Uh, but even then, I, it, it, the prerequisite for that is to have that soft, sultry, creamy mouthfeel with those big bursting kind of fruit flavors. And so it doesn't have either or any of that really going on it's giving you a nice fun kind of sweet fruitiness kind of slightly kind of it's not synthetic but candy like but not hard candy like kind of fruitiness without really much as far as bittering goes but a really drinkable package so like i said it comes off like some of those older kind of ipas um i have no idea where you can get this or how much it costs now i actually was seeing that jack and a couple people actually knew about this brewery ronald talking about it jack talking about it so obviously it's something that could be had i mean jack's from london um you know what i mean this was sent to me from uh from netherlands so i assume it's something that people can over over there can get um I'm not sure how much it is a can over here. We do four packs. I believe over there, it's usually per can and leave you with it. If you like what we like this, if you like those really old school, new school kind of IPAs, again, like I said, the second fiddles of the world, the, you know, heady old school, heady, because heady has changed. I don't know if people realize it. old school, heady and, um, and like sip and stuff like that. If you dig those beers, I'll dig this so there you go. little review in the books. Hopefully you guys enjoyed it. There you go.
one more beer review before we get out of here. We're gonna do uh we're gonna do Kyle's Kyle's other half uh vanilla porter that he sent off. So let's get back to some comments. Um let's see. Everybody's telling me a phlegm. Phlegm. Chicken soup from Campbell's cures the common cold with denim makes it a cowboy. So therefore, it's a cowboy that cures the common cold. Okay. Cold snap and treehouses IPAs for tonight on my lineup. Cold snap from um cold snap is what? Cold snap is a uh, Boston, Boston beer company, right? It sounds like a mimosa. Put a pink umbrella in it. If I had one, I would. Um drink a hams, Coors Miller, Budweiser. There you go. Beer should not taste like a fruit bowl. I don't know. I mean, real beer. Real beer is up for debate, man. You know, what is real beer? It certainly wasn't Pilsner. You know? I mean, I love it. It's one of my favorite beers, but they weren't making crisp, clean beer when beer was invented. You know, and it was kind of fucked up. You know, funky beers, you know, clean fermented beers weren't really a thing, so... Does that mean we should all be drinking sours and that's the only thing we should be drinking? You get past that, then you talk about, you know, a German, Belgian hefts, and bubble gum and, and uh, fruit, you know, oranges and stuff like that, and yeast esters. Is that real beer? Because that kind of tastes like a fruit bowl. That's been around forever. I don't know. The thing I do know is I don't care. <laughs> do whatever you want. Drink whatever you want. Enjoy whatever you want. Just don't tell me those fruit smoothie beers that explode our beer. That's the only one I don't care about. And that's not even it. Like, I don't care. Like, I, it's weird because I'm such a curmudgeon, but I really just don't care. Like, I just, if it's a good beverage, it's a good beverage. But I understand at some point or time um, that beer is definitely going to get to the point where it's, 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 some stuff is not beer. You know, milkshake IPAs, those fruit smoothie beers that I was talking about. There are more beverages that happen to have kind of a association with being a beer. Those aren't beers. But to say an IPA is not a beer, this is a core four beer. You know, it's hops, hops water, malt, and yeast, man. Um, just because you're getting that fruit flavor from hops doesn't mean it's any less of a beer. You might not like it. It might not be for you. Um, but I can get down with that. I can get down with that. I enjoy myself a hazy IPA. I enjoy myself a milkshake IPA. I enjoy myself all the pills are on earth. I enjoy myself lagers and ales and cream ales and rosh beers and all kinds of stuff so you know beer is beer the diversity of beers is very awesome and very exciting at least for me uh favorite style of beer for each of the four seasons so my favorite summer beer is gonna be lager you know Someone just said Brady sprained his ankle in a walkthrough. If that's real, then I'm fucking. You know what? If that's real, fuck Tom Brady even more. You want to know why? Because it didn't happen. He faked the he faked the sprained ankle. No, no, no. This is fucking. I don't. I I don't buy it. Because if he if they're saying he sprained a fucking ankle, two two things. One, it's not fucking, it didn't actually fucking happen. And two, it's, he made it up. So that way he either looks like a hero when he wins on a sprained angle or he's an excuse when he fucking loses. So I don't even want to hear that shit. Um, let's see. So in the summer, it's going to be lager pills and stuff like that. Pale ale. Hazy, like hoppy full, hoppy small ABV pale ale, Saison. You know what I mean? Those kind of things. When I get in the fall, then I start to talk about a little bit kind of, you know, German, classic German stuff. Uh, you know, smoke beer, Rosh beer, um, Dunkles, fucking, you know, English milds, even like getting in those kind of stuff. Wintertime, you know, I'm typical, you know, I'm just going to get a little bit darker, even, you know, double bock, and, you know, stouts and porters and all kinds of stuff. But I'm, uh, through that whole time, I'm drinking lager and Pilsner and pale health. That, that never goes away. And then um, springtime is, uh, is gin and tonics. There you go. Um, Sam Adams, yes. Jackson, a beer wolf did an advent calendar. Again, I got phlegm was in it. Um, phlegm, sorry. Yeah, but see, you can't get a lot of your craft beers in the pubs. You got to order out. Then you have, like, that's the one thing that breweries over here don't do that you guys get. 
like for example, like how many different breweries can you get on Cloudwater site? You know, you'll have all these different breweries you can purchase from Cloudwater site website and order them to your house. Like here, breweries don't sell other people's fucking beer. That never happens. There's nothing against the law to a certain extent. You can do it if you have the right license. You know, Hill Farm said it has like random shit like fucking Cantillon and fucking Dre Fontaine and shit that he enjoys. That's an aberration. You can't go on another brewery's website and fucking do that. Brady made it up. Couldn't agree more in your beer take. Uh, drink what makes you happy. Exactly, man. Yeah. Unless it's turpentine. Don't drink turpentine if that makes you happy because then you're trying to kill yourself. Um, so name a style you don't like. Seltzers? Um, no. Uh, I'm trying to think of my... I mean... My least favorite style of beer, honestly, is enamel ripping over the top acidic sour. I just can't do it, man. Like, I can't. Like, I like sour beers, but I like funky sour. I like Jester King sour. I like fucking Cantillon sour. I like Dre Fontaine sour. Once you get to the, like, you know, fucking, like, cascade where you drink it and you're just like, you feel your teeth melting away. and you, it, it, I just can't fuck with that shit. Rosh beer in a certain way. I can't fuck with it, man. Like it, it, when it gets like super over the top. Peavy. I don't like it. If it's bologna and kielbasa and shit, I'm cool with that. Um, actually, here's one. And this is not so much beer, but spice. Allspice. I'm allergic to allspice. I did not know that until probably about six months ago. Oh, fuck me. I'm allergic to allspice. And I didn't know what it was for years. For years, I couldn't figure it out. Couldn't figure it out. And I drank this one beer with my buddy Keith. I didn't review it. I wish I would reviewed it because then I, you would have seen me fucking go into pain. But when people put allspice in beer... It hits me so hard to the point where like my chest hurts. So I'm not gonna die. It's not like I get like anaphylactic shock, but um, it hurts so bad. Like my chest starts to tighten up, and I get really, really uncomfortable. Um, so some spiced beers, not that I don't like them, I get really nervous when I drink them. So I did a mystery beer. Um, maybe it was like a week or so ago, and I drank it, and I go fuck. Like. I don't think this has allspice in it, but it had winter spices in it. You know, it had like kind of your cardamom, kind of, you know, gingerbread, kind of clove, that kind of thing, which I very close sometimes to allspice for me. And I'm like, oh my God, man. I'm like, I think I'm fucked. I'm like, this might have allspice in it. I'm like, I hope it doesn't. It didn't. No, it's fine. But man, if I, and, and, and it pisses me off. Because I love winter warmers, and I love... It's one of my favorite beers during uh, the Christmas season is to have a nice, rich, kind of well-done winter warmer. And I get nervous now drinking them, man. Because that when I drank that, it was um, a Nickelbrook beer that I bought, and I didn't know it had allspice in it. And at that point, I didn't know it was allspice that killed me. And it was a barrel-aged grain crew or something like that. And me and my buddy Keith were social distancing outside. I'm like, let's crack this fucking thing. I drank it, and I'm sipping. I'm like, this is actually really tasty. And then actually about five minutes later, I'm like, I think there's something wrong with me. And then all of a sudden, I was like, oh, dude. I'm like, oh, my chest hurts. I'm like, I don't know what to do now. So it's like, it's weird. I know that's kind of a weird thing to say because it's not like a beer taste thing. It's more of my body reacting to it, but that's that shit scares me. Um, it says round set. And as long as it's natural, nothing artificial or add ingredients. But what's added ingredients? You know, up until a certain date and time, me and, and Ronald's talking about, you know, beer that is beer flavored beer shouldn't taste like a fruit bowl as he said earlier uh as long as there's no added but what's added ingredients that's even that's up for debate because up until a certain time yeast wasn't allowed because they didn't know what yeast was so does that make it any less okay okay what about sugar you're like what do you mean i sugar? well fucking belgian candy sugar is beet sugar does that make it is that an added ingredient? Like, does that make it less of a beer? I think Belgian doubles, Belgian quads, or if someone said put a Mount Rushmore of what you consider beer 
together, I think a Belgian quad would be on that, and that technically has added sugar to it. Does that make it less of a beer? Barrel aging. Um, you know what I mean? Like fruited beers, like from traditional breweries, like Fantôme and Cantillon and Dre Fontaine, when they do fruited Lambic, is it like, okay, now that is less of a beer or go, you know, Goza, you know what I mean? Traditionally in Germany, if they're going to put any kind of simple syrup or something into the beer, uh, for those Berliner vices and stuff like that, like, is that make it, I don't know. I've said this before and I'll say it again and I'll never change it. And I think it's probably the best way you can go about it is that I always refer to that 1970s court hearing on pornography in the United States, where one of the judges actually said, I don't know what pornography is. I can't explain it to you, but I know it when I see it. And that's kind of the way beer works for me is that like, I can't tell you based off the can and based off of what somebody told me is in this beer, whether it's really a beer or not. But when I drink it, I can tell you, yes, this is beer. And that's why a lot of times in my beer reviews and I drink a beer and I go, okay, this is less beer, more adjunct, or it's all barrel or it's this and that and the other thing. That's what I mean by that is that, you know, beers taste like beers. This tastes like a beer. Yeah. It's a very much fruit forward and all that kind of stuff, but it, it, it's, it's, it's still beer. And that's kind of where that comes from. Mm. Oh, almost time to shut down shop. Let's see. So adding natural fruit to beer, is that, is that natural? And, and pretty much that's what Thomas is kind of hitting at, not for me. Um, I'm guessing you only drink lager then. Uh, and I piece hazy. What about fruit? Oh, man, people are just piling on, man. But what about, but that's the thing. Anything with lactose. I can get in your mindset about that. Like, you know, milkshake IPAs. But what about a classic oatmeal milk stout or something like that like something that had milk sugar in it that was deemed infinitely classic you ever worry about getting you will get um all spice and mystery beer <laughs> i mean i explained it i do and that's the thing i'm I, am i worried i don't think i'm worried it would suck but it's again it doesn't i'm not gonna die from it it's it's three hours of discomfort so it's not like I'm like, oh, if I drink this, I might die. That's not happening. I think lactose is underrated when used good, but definitely overused. And I think Beerstagram is pretty much on point here. Um, I think lactose, when used as a, a, something to elevate the beer, whether it be from mouthfeel or sweetness perception or something like that, is really, really a great dose. Um, you know, there's a lot of breweries, even if they don't tell you, their beers might have lactose in them, um, it, more specifically IPAs. And, and, and it's not so much that they're trying to hide it from you, but it's, it's such a minimal amount. Even if you were lactose intolerant, it's probably not even going to affect you. But you're, if they're tweaking it from a sweetness or a mouthfeel standpoint, and I think it's really, really done really well. But that's pretty much any ingredient on earth, whether it be food or beer or otherwise. You know, garlic is the best thing in the history of mankind, but you put all the garlic and everything... I'd probably still like it, but it might not make it great. Um, and that's kind of how everything goes. I mean, balance is key. You know, I can go, I can start going into a, uh, a Thanos thing here where everything needs to have balance, but um, you know, it's true. You know, I mean, uh, I like an over the top, crazy two by four to the face, hazy IPA, but even the ones that do me infinitely proper, there's some semblance of some kind of balance in there. Um, Clayton saying, have you ever had anything from Knott's Brewing? No. No, I haven't. And I'm angry about it. Why? Because I know people that get it. More specifically, Sean from NerdSense. And he's never sent me any. Fucking asshole. No, I mean, you know, Notch is, Notch is on my on my short list of places I am going to visit when, when we're allowed to visit places. Let's put it that way. Um, I should have went there before COVID. I didn't. Um, for those who don't know, Notch is basically like Lager Palooza up there in the lower portion of New England. Um, and uh, I just want to drink all their beers. So I will get there eventually. Um, and then we have Mike. I don't know where you're from, Mike, but you say there's a brewery here making milkshake beers. Man, man there's some milkshake. I would say a, a good portion of milkshake beers are what I would like to call hot garbage. Um, but there's some, when they're really good, 
They're really good. I had the first milkshake IPA ever make. I did. It was really good. Um, when they, I forget when it was. 2015, maybe, give or take 16, when Omnipolo and Tired Hands made the strawberry milkshake um, IPA. Um, I just happened to be in New York uh, at the time, and um, and I went to Turst in Brooklyn, and um, they had a keg of it, you know, and I thought it was fantastic. And I've had some really good milkshake IPAs here and there. Um, I probably had more shitty ones um, than have good ones, but when they're really good, like um, I just did one from Abomination Brewing. Um, and it was really, really good, really well done. Again, I would probably say it's more of a really tasty beverage than a really tasty beer. I think that's the proper way to describe them. Um, and you know, uh, hot butcher makes their blazed orange, which is fantastic. You know, some entire, even like tired hands, like their strawberry and vanilla is quite nice. Um, but most of the other ones I've had from them have been hot garbage. Um, so it's, it, you know, there can be good ones done, but like I said, again, I'm not going to sit here and say this is the pinnacle of what good beer is. It's just a really tasty beverage. that happens to be fermented and, you know, as beer, you know, so that's kind of where that one lands. So green, Bay. green milkshake IPA from green Bay. I don't know. What 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 are you? Why are you drinking anything but fucking New Glarus? Is beyond me. You're in Wisconsin. Just fucking drink New Glarus all day long. You don't need to drink anything else. Jesus, I had an amazing banana vanilla ice cream black milkshake IPA, ten percent yesterday, and it was good. That's crazy. Ten percent black milkshake IPA. Um. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I'm saying. You're in New Glarus. You're in Wisconsin, man. Just freaking drink all that shit all day. And you never have to worry about anything. Um, last one for you. Over two and a half players with a pass attempt. I don't know. I think the if anything, the but hmm. Mm, I don't know. I don't know about that one. I, I I know that's a fun play to make. If, it depends on the odds on that one. If you give me plus 220 on it, I'm not taking it. If you give me plus like four, plus five, maybe I take that. Um, only because, you know, typically in the past, I don't remember, does, I mean, does is anybody on the Bucks from their skill position played quarterback previously? No, I don't think. Um, and from Kansas City, why the fuck would you let anybody throw the ball but Mahomes? You might see some, I don't, know, I don't know. I don't know. I don't think I like that one. Um, Kelsey had a trick pass. Um, yeah, but I don't know. I, it, it, at, at Cincy, read what you just wrote. At Cincy. Not in the Super Bowl. At Cincy. They were having fun at Cincy. Just fucking wish it. Now, you could say they did it at Cincy to practice the play so they could pull it out in a this thing like this. I'm not saying it's not going to happen. That's why I said it has to have bigger odds, big decent odds for me to get all kind of hot and bothered over. Glass is empty about midnight. Night peeps. Cheers. So yeah, beer Instagram. I am going to do. We are almost there. We are 15 minutes away from us stopping this live stream. I'm going to do one more beer review, and then we're going to cut this off right around six so I can go out there, settle in, have a little bite to eat. Enjoy the Super Bowl. They say, because if you look, tune in, they say it starts at 6, doesn't start at 6.30. Anyway, where's that uh, Where's that other half jam? There it is. So we're going to be doing this other half jam. Did I ever turn my camera off? I didn't. I'm going to have to restart it. This makes it easier if I do. There we go. Okay. I'm going to do a little other half. Um, yeah, a little other half. This is not a collab. Straight other half comes from my boy Kyle from Brooklyn. This is other half staring at the sea vanilla. It's a Baltic porter with vanilla and 10.3% alcohol by volume. So there you go. Yeah, a little other half of this piece. We'll see what's what. Let me get my little fatty snifter out here. Let's see what's what. I've been sitting on this one for a while. Ooh. Didn't open right. Um, actually, I might still be able to get it. Oh, I 
did get it. Oh, I'm good. I'm good. Um, <laughs> yeah. Anyway, I've been sitting on this one for a hot minute. Um, I've been waiting to drink it. I just haven't been... <sighs> I've been in a mood for dark beer. Just this one's been sitting on a shelf. I don't know why. Maybe because it's vanilla. Vanilla has to be done in a very specific, very purposeful way for me to kind of get really hot and bothered over. Um, so hopefully this one is much the case. So anyway, what does that look like? That looks like dessert, right? looks like Coca-Cola with a gigantic head. I mean, it's rich, dense. What I like my cough to look like color. Pretty. Let's see if we can get those. I think I'm gonna like this quite a bit, honestly. Yeah, because it really does come off as a slightly bittering, slightly malt roasted malt bittering. Um, kind of like Milk chocolatey kind of maltiness with a very soft dollop of vanilla, at least in the nose. And, and vanilla, if anything, typically it's got to be big on the nose to be big in the taste. Rarely is there little vanilla in the nose and big vanilla in the taste. It's usually pretty much either equal or way less aromatically, like from aromatics to taste. And I'm just not getting a big vanilla portion off this, and I really, really dig it. I think it's more of a soft, gentle addition, kind of like we were talking about in the live stream, about how, like, if you do lactose lightly, it doesn't get too heavy-handed. Yeah. Soft roasted malts, a little more chocolate vibe, soft, very soft vanilla. Done and done. Cheers. Thanks, Kyle. Why don't you do this more often, other half? That does not suck. And what, let me rephrase that, or let me clarify. Other half makes fine beers, very good beers. I have my appreciation and love for what other half has done has only grown over the past four or five years. But their stouts have been a mess for me. Sure, it's a porter, whatever. It's 10%. It's dark. There's vanilla. It's a stout. They've just been so adjunct heavy. And this is where we're kind of talking about with um with Ron saying, you know, he doesn't like all that kind of shit thrown in a beer. And this is where I think it's the opposite of that. Because a lot of their beers, more specifically the last few Kyle have sent off that come in like 500 milliliter bottles, have been like coffee this, vanilla that, blah, 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 blah. But that's all they've been. Either like super adjunct forward, not much beer to be found, and very, very sweet, very sticky, very milkshakey. Not necessarily milkshake like as far as like an IPA, but just very confectionery sweet. This is very bittering. And the vanilla is used very, very simply, very, very gently, very, very purposely. Like there's not a huge vanilla note to it. It's almost like a lactose addition. That's how the vanilla comes off as opposed to a big dose of vanilla. I can't underestimate how surprisingly bittering this beer is um, for other half or anybody who's making beer now nowadays. It's almost Russian Imperial Stout level bittering. Um, it's almost Russian Imperial Stout that was made from a U.S. brewer level bittering. It's not that bittering. It's not like North Coast Old, um, old Rasputin. It says big, nice rose to it. What do we get date time? What's the date on this, Kyle? I don't think there's a date on here anywhere. He'll know. Um, there's none in the can that I can see. And um, I think this is great, man. Roasted malts all the way. A nice bittering hop to it, too. Really nice kind of fluffy, creamy mouthfeel. That's where this one kind of elevates itself beyond just being an imperial set. It is a porter. It's like an imperial porter, almost like Baltic porter level. It's got to be a Baltic. Right, it says Baltic porter on there. I'm like, yeah, it's got to be a Baltic porter. No shit, Sherlock. It says it on the fucking can, asshole. Um, and... Uh, Man, I just can't. I just can't get over how fun the bittering level on this beer is. But when that dose of vanilla and the way the sweetness comes off in a beer, it's no way out of whack. Even though it does lean bittering, it's just really tasty stuff. Probably, let's put it this way: it's probably one of the better. It might be the best non-barrel aged dark beer I've had from other half. 
I think that might be the case because there's been some barrel aid stuff that is kind of just blew me away. What was the, what was the, what was it a wheat wine? Gold strap. Was it called gold strap or something like that? That shit was amazing. So they've done some darker beers. So it was like a wheat wine blend bar, wheat wine stout blend, or just a wheat wine. I don't fucking know. Burn barrel aged wheat wine or something like that. That was absolutely bonkers good. Um, so there's been better dark beers I've had in general, but as far as non barrel aged beers, it might be up there. It's up there. It's Mount Rushmore status for our other half at minimum. Um, yeah, and it's really casey. Thank you very much, Kyle, for actually tossing this off. Um, like I said at the beginning, all these the, the reviews I do during this live stream, I'll actually I'm going to cut them up. Um, because I have my regular camera over here going, not my camera over here, my camera over here, not over here, over there. Um, going so I will cut these up and actually re upload them, probably do them tomorrow or something like that. Um, just so you guys can watch these reviews on their own. And this is really crazy stuff, and it's funny because you know, it, 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 I have a lot of stout in my fridge at the moment, um, and this one's been toying around in there because I was like, fucking other half, fucking vanilla. I'm like, I really don't want to drink a vanilla candy bar right now. So I'll just wait on this, wait on this, wait on this. And then tonight I'm like, you know what? Fuck it. I'm like, I'll put it in my bag. When I get to it, I get to it. I'm like, ah, fuck it. Kyle's in the chat. I'm like, I'll do it. I'm like, I want to do a Kyle beer because he's actually hanging out in the chat. And I'm angry that I fucking didn't drink it sooner because this is absolutely delicious stuff. But I'm happy too because I get to do it live while Kyle's around. So there you go. Um, very tasty stuff. Let's talk about it. This is one of the better Imperial Porters stouts. I mean, adjunct dark beer. Double digit adjunct dark beer I've had. It's like, yes, it might even be Mount Rushmore status. I don't know. I have to think on that one, but it's tasty. It's worthy. Let's put it that way. Value and availability, no idea. Other half, 10%. I'm guessing this is at minimum five bucks a can. Kyle, let us know. And leave you with, if you like what, will you like this? If you like Russian Imperial Stouts, but more in a Euro sense as opposed to an American sense, but you want a porter-like mouthfeel and you want the ever so slightest little chef's kiss of, uh, of, of vanilla, then you'll like this. There you go. Another review in the books. Hopefully you guys enjoyed it. Down there if you want to talk about it. All that fun stuff. There you go. Fun beer reviews. I, had, I was going to go into my spiel there that I do at the end of every review, but I'm doing a lot of hang, so I don't have to do that shit. Anyway, um, comments. Lene Red from Wisconsin was was best. Miller fucked the, that brewery up. Never had it. I don't believe I had. Creamy Dark is their best now. Kyle Johnson said, I like this one. I think it was from December. Okay. Hey there, Dutch beer Garbin chiming in. Uh, I love to try some some of the darker beers. He's talking about other half. They just got a whole bunch of um, other half land there in uh, in the UK, so they're going to be ripping through a bunch of other half reviews. So go check that out. It'd be really cool to get a yeah, get a take um, idea of what the UK guys think of other half right now because there, there's been a lot of chatter from the UK and the Euro guys going, nah, fucking treehouse, other half. Uh, we get the same quality shit over here. You know. Um, choose other half IPA over other half barrel age IPA I would choose IPA um, I mean that it's 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 IPA and the reason why it's IPA is because their barrel aging program, the ones that have really kind of turned me on, have been very simple. Most of the barrel aged stuff they've done has been a lot of adjunct heavy stuff, and I'm not a big fan of that. Like, I like barrel aged barley wine stout. You want to toss coffee in there? Fucking have at it. You want to throw a little bit of something in there else? Have at it. But when you layer adjunct on adjunct on adjunct, that's where it gets a little bit sideways for me. And that tends to be more often the case when it comes to the other half. Their IPAs tend to be pretty straightforward. I mean, you know what you're getting when it comes... And, and their lactose additions and their IPAs are usually very light. You know what I mean? They use, their la they use lactose and IPA the way I like it, which is kind of to uh, kind of accentuate and to prop up the beer as far as mouthfeel. And then, you know, and maybe add a dollop of sweetness is something that fully 
attenuated. You know what I mean? Like lactose is non-digestible sugar for yeast. So what I assume a lot of times they do, what is it? Their dr dream? Is that the, is that the dream series is when they use lactose? What I'm assuming they're doing is they're, they're just pounding out a beer that the yeast gobbles up every bit and piece of sweetness in that beer. Uh, from the malt side of things, and they use the lactose one tad mouthfeel to add a sweetness to it, but the sweetness comes off super soft, so it ends lends a super soft mouthfeel on this not under attenuated beer, so it just ends up being just a pleasure to drink. That's why they're one of the best when it comes down to like their lactose beef beers. So I'd probably lean, um, not probably definitely lean, uh, IPA. Um, look up old froth and slosh, the beer with the head on the bottom. Really good in the, in the day. Hey, old school, man. I dig it. I'm definitely looking up. Uh, what characterizes the Russian Imperial Stout uh, for the taste? I mean, bittering. So, you know, if you read, you know, uh, very romantic books, they'll be like, Russian Imperial Stout made for Catherine the Great, and they had to, she had to be really bittering and all that kind of stuff, which is true. I mean, you know, Courage Russian Imperial Stout or Courage Imperial Russian Stout. I always say Russian Imperial, but they say Imperial Russian. You're thinking of a bittering forward imperial stout. So you're talking about 10, 10 to 13% bittering forward, both from a roasted malt standpoint and also from a hop standpoint. But for me, a non like super aggressive bittering. And that's where the Americanized version gets a little bit bastardized for me. So you're talking about classic Courage Imperial Russian Stout, my favorite all time which is Struce, Struce's um, uh, Black Albert. It's, it, that's like Merriam-Webster Dictionary Imperial Russian style for me. They're bittering, but they're not like ripping, like ripping with bitterness. And the big thing that I, I wouldn't call it a prerequisite for Imperial Russian stout, um, but I think it, it's kind of what separates the haves from the have-nots for me is cherry. And not an added cherry, like a lot of the really big or, or the, the sultry, delicious, fantastical Imperial Russian styles I've had always have this cool kind of fun Wells and Young. This is this is one right here. This is, I mean, this particular vintage was probably one of my favorites of all time. It's their Imperial Extra Double Stout, which is their version of an Imperial Russian Stout. I mean, the cherry notes that you get off a really well done Imperial Russian Stout are absolutely fantastic. And that's kind of what separates the best from the best for me. And um, and those three have it in spades from the from the Struce to the to the Courage to the to the to the Well was it Wells or is it uh excuse me, the brewery good anyway. Um, but you when you're talking about the Americanized version of an Imperial Russian stout, which is you know classically your North Coast old Rasputin, even the Mullins, uh cease and desist, which it was their Rasputin back in the day, can be quite bittering forward. Um, uh, even uh, Black is Beautiful. So if any of you have had Black is Beautiful um, from, you know, the collaboration, that they, they started over here from Weathered Souls. If you look at that recipe, that is a classic Americanized version of an Imperial Russian stout. It's the reason why I wasn't like over the top gaga for a ton of those beers, even though they served a beautiful purpose and a meaningful purpose and you should buy them anyway. Um, they were just that Americanized version of an Imperial Russian stout. So they had this huge bitterness component to them um, way beyond what I think they should have, but still very, very fun beers nonetheless. Um, so yeah, there you go. That's my definition. We're almost out of time here. Six o'clock. Time to cut it short. Uh, a jar chiming in. Uh, barrel H Russian Imperial Stout from Eastern Europe are insane. I can imagine. Puhala. Don't fuck around. And uh, I bought a four pack of refined with tequila, bourbon, and scotch. Scotch is such a weird thing for me. And uh, barrel aged beers. I love scotch and barrel aged beers. It is almost. I love scotch in general. I mean, scotch is like, if you're saying, hey, here's a mixed drink, what do you want? 99 times out of 10, it's going to be scotch. The only thing I'm going to drink, hard liquor wise, unless I'm being an asshole and drinking shots, is scotch and gin and tonics. 
I'll fuck with rum every now and then. I'll fuck with crown every now and then. I'll fuck with another thing, but it's almost exclusively scotch. I love scotch barrels, but tequila not so much. Um, tequila doesn't work for me for for a barrel, but eh, depends on how it's used. So hey, everybody, we are exactly at the two hour mark. So that means we are going to cut this short because I got I got a game to watch. That's what we're going to do. We're going to do Super Bowl. Thank you very much for everybody stopping by. The comments were absolutely fantastic. Um, we went, ended up talking about beer, talking about social media, talking about sports. Did three beer reviews in two hours. So we did a mystery beer. We did uh, a Dutch-based double IPA. We did a little bit of other half goodness. So I think this is a pretty successful live stream. So. I appreciate you guys stopping by, hanging out with me, um, and uh, just humoring me for these two hours of pre-gaming. So hopefully you guys have fun tonight if you're going to watch the game or otherwise. Um, if you're re-watching this, and uh, one of the things that um, that uh, people chimed in on here for a couple different reasons were about uh, specific beers. So there's some people that actually chimed in about, have you reviewed this? Have you reviewed that? I will go through the comment section. I will try to find the beers that you actually suggested. There was the uh, Guinness IPA. There was a Fruited Sour from Flying Monkeys. I'll do my best to find those beers. Uh, conversely, there was a couple of people out there that are like, hey, man, we would love to send you this and this from where we're at. You're more than welcome to send me beer. I understand some of the UK guys, it's a bit of a tall order, but I appreciate the want. If you want to send me beers, you're more than welcome. Reach out to me via email, either matt at massivebeers.com or massivebeers.gmail.com. Either way, you will get a hold of me. And uh, there you go. So hopefully you guys have a great night. Hopefully you're enjoying some good beer right now. Hopefully uh, you win all your bets that we talked about. Yeah. Hope to see you guys next time.